All right, let's now create our second counter app. Uh, launch Android Studio. And then uh, we want to create a new project. You might see your previous project being memorized over here. That's okay. If you want to uh, review it, you can go ahead. But for now, let's create a new project. It's the same, uh, the same procedure. Make sure you choose empty activity over here. Next. And then for the name of the application, let's call that maybe just counter over here. Okay. And then make sure the package name will be ecs1022.tutorial.counter over here. And then the workspace will should be memorized from before, but you can double check. It should be under your uh, W21 workspace and then mobile apps, which we created. And now it should be another folder called, uh, called counter over here. And make sure the language is actually Java, right? And then you would say uh, finish. All right, it's going to take some time to build over here. Okay, it should be rather quick. I think it's only the very first time when you create your uh, you created your uh, your Android Studio project. It might take some time, but the subsequent builds should be rather fast. All right, it's now done. So I will go directly to the GUI design following the same procedure. Okay. So which file should I modify? Can you answer that question? We should really go under basically rest resources under layout, and then we go to activity underscore main dot xml. Right. Click on that. And then let's hide the project by clicking on the tab. And then we want to make sure we focus on the design, right? You can see this time it's been memorized already. We don't really show design plus blue, uh, blueprint, just design over here. Let me make it a little bit larger over here. And I don't need that initial text view, hello world. I don't need it. Okay, I can say delete over here. All right, before I start, in, uh, 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 before I start implementing the GUI design, let's talk about what the design should be. Okay, let's go back to this page over here. You should really build some familiarity about the four GUI components over here. Let's go, let's go directly to the counter. Let's say we have a single counter over here. We want the user to be able to enter some initial value for the counter, and then the user should be able to uh, to either click on the button to increment the value by one or click on another button to uh, decrement the value by one, right? So let's say for this GUI, uh, for this app, we don't really need need a spinner. We just need the uh, text field. We need uh, definitely the uh, text view to really display the result and also two buttons. So that's the main thing I want to show you. If you got two buttons, according to what we said in the previous video, that means you need to attach two control methods to each button, right? That's something we'll see. Uh, at the end. Let's now try to design the GUI uh, on paper quickly. So what we will do is we're going to set the initial value so we can say, oh, let me just make it thinner. We can say init value for the counter, right? So now it's going to be uh, let a user enter. So we're going to assume the user is going to uh, actually give, give us an integer. And also I can show to you how you can convert screen into integer. Okay, we'll see that by using some uh, method you can take for granted. That will be init uh, value over here. And then we're going to get, uh, sorry, we're just going to get, you know what, I think it's going to be more fun. I'm going to create three buttons, OK? So we can say uh, creates counter, OK? So that's going to be one button here. And then we are also going to uh, actually uh, have another, uh, let's say this part over here, we're going to display the value. For example, if we say here, the initial value is actually uh, two, for example. And then as soon as I click on the create counter over here, it's going to show here counter value two. Okay, so that's the, uh, the part. And we're also going to allow the user to change the counter object. So this should be some counter object behind the scene, which we will use our OOP uh, skill to actually build, which is extremely easy, right? We'll see that. So that's why I just want a simple illustration example. And then I also want another two buttons here. Let me use the same color. I just want to use another two buttons here. Let's say this one will be increments. And another buttons over here will be decrements. 
right? For example, uh, whenever like, if I click on increments over here, if I click on that, so the value over here should be changed from two to three. And if I click on the button over here again, it's going to change from three back to two. Right, you can see my point here. That's kind of the conceptual design. Right, let's now do it. Okay, so we got three buttons here and also one text view, uh, two text view and also, okay, let me just say it again. We got three buttons and also we got two text views and also we got text one text field, right? That's what we do. Let's now do it. Switch back to Android Studio and the GUI design. Let's now do the uh, text view first. Text, go to text view, drag and drop to over here okay and then i'm going to connect to the top over here and then i'll set the uh margin over here let's just say 20 okay and id uh, uh let me click on the gui component here you can see you gotta click on that before you set the id click on that currently simply just id so label will be the count uh the prefix so label init value enter we got a refactor to publish the change and the text should be initial value colon okay and then so that's the text view okay it's done i don't need to say too much because we've we've done this already right it is if there's anything worth uh talking about i'll definitely slow down initial value and then we should really do also the text field so text go to plain text and drag and drop to maybe here okay connect to the top over here and then uh, maybe it should also be 20, I guess. Maybe, you know what? Maybe let me uh, increase this a little bit. How about 30? So they will align a little bit better, okay? And then, so this uh, left connection point should connect to the right connection point over there. And then we should set some gap over here, right? Let's say the gap between them will be 20, okay? And then I can potentially make this a little bit down. So the gap should be larger. So what about 35? right okay good enough and then if i click on this uh text field over here what about the id all right the id it should be uh something else right so id should be let's say uh, input over here init uh init value enter and then refactor right and what about the text over here? We don't need to enter anything. So I would think you, you uh, I think it's really up to you, up to your design. If you enter anything here, that means when you launch the app uh, in the emulator, it's going to show this text first, but you're gonna delete it before you can enter the value. So I would say, let's avoid some trouble for when we, uh, when we enter the input. So let's just say, um, keep it blank. All right, so that's about basically the um, first row, we're done. Initial value over here. Notice one thing here. Whatever you enter over here, you can imagine it's basically like a next line scanner method. So whatever that's going to be retrieved is going to be like a two. Let me just uh, have some look at, uh, some look ahead for you. So later on, we want to convert this string two into integer two. But I'm going to show you how to do it. It's rather easy in Java. Okay, we'll see. All right, initial value, and then we're going to see uh, the button here uh create counter right so as soon as i click on that i should really uh invoke uh i should really create some events that will invoke the creation of some counter objects basically right that's something we'll see in the next video for now only gui design so i want to have some buttons here uh let's say button and then drag and drop to over here i can put it in the middle so i can say left to the border right to the border over here right and then top to the bottom of uh the text field and then i can put some gap on the top right what about uh 30 should be okay right how about that okay and then for the button here and then i'm going to give an id right click on the button here and then id uh we can say button what about creates counter all right and then enter and then refactor, of course. What about the text? Let's say creates. You know what? Let me just make some more informative name. Initialize. Initialize a new counter. Like that. 
meaning that whenever I click on this button here, that simply means I want to initialize a new counter with whatever value that's over here. Presumably, there should be some value uh, that's entered over here that can be converted into an integer. Okay, that's something we'll see. Uh, one thing to uh, look ahead in the next video, I'm actually going to actually search for the onClick attributes, right? And then I'm going to choose some controller method. But currently, I haven't declared any of the method just yet, so there's nothing for me to choose. I'll do that later, pretty much like how we did it for the uh, uh, greeting message app. Okay, let me just go back. Okay, it's really uh, important to re uh, to recall the detail. And over here, okay, project configuration file can be added to GIP. Don't ask again, okay, for this project, okay. Right, so now we are done with uh, this particular one over here. Okay, we're also done with this. So what I want to do now is about the invisible output label, right? The, uh, invisible output text view. So what I will do is I'll go to text, go to text view, drag and drop over here. So we can, uh, okay, sorry left connection point to the border over here, right connection point to the border over here, and then the top to the button, to the button here, and then put some, uh, you can see over here, right? So we can put some gap, right? You can choose maybe 16, right? Uh, maybe a little bit, uh, how about 32? I can even make it maybe 40. Okay, how about a 40? That's good. Okay, click on the uh, uh, text view. What about the ID? So this will be basically the output, right? So you can say output, and then uh, what about counter value? Enter, and then say refactor, all right? And what about the text? Initially, it should be just blank, right? You will only be dis uh, you will only display when we actually click on either this button here or either of the increment or decrement button, right? So either of the three buttons. All right, that's pretty good. So let's switch back. So now we are also done with the counter value over here, right? So now we're going to do the increment decrement quickly. All right. Let's now go to the buttons again. So let's now go to button over here. All right. Let's put one here. So this to the left. Okay. And then uh, let me say this. We may actually, uh, what might be the best way to do this? Let me give it a try, okay? So I might just want to say this may be to the top over here, but I might just need to uh, have some very uh, large gap over here. Let's say 100, for example. Maybe even more, 400. That's too much, maybe. Uh, maybe 300 over here. Okay, you can see so you can see that, right? Otherwise, uh, uh, yeah, you can you need to just adjust the layout yourself, right? Let me just say 250. That might just be enough over here. But we can always run the app and then uh, to test. Okay. Again, it's it's really artistic. I'm pretty sure your artistic judgment will be better than mine. So uh, I think that's good enough for, for me to illustrate this. Okay. So button here, and then the left uh, the left should be let's say 20 over here. Okay. And then uh, click on the button here. What should be the ID? Okay. Should be button. So what, uh, let's say this one here should be increments. Enter, and then refactor. All right, this one's done. And then on click will be set later for this particular button, right? We'll do that later. Let's do the button for decrements. So you will go to buttons here and then drag and drop button here. Should be aligned with the, that one there. So left should be connected to its right over here. And then we should put some gap. How about 100? Okay, that's good. And then this should be, uh, and then you should really uh, connect its right to the border over here, right? I think that's rather good, right? So the left border is 20. So why don't we set the right border to be 20 as well over here? And then you can see the top over here is actually 250, right? So we should really connect the top to the border on the top, and then we should put 250 over here, right? Yeah, you just gotta pay attention to the details over here. I'm not sure how this will look like, but hopefully it's not too bad, right? Okay, so here, this is button here. I'm not too sure why the increment is gone, but let's do it again. You know, I forgot to set the text, that's why, my bad. So now if you click on that and then go to text, so you're gonna say uh, increments, increment counter, enter, all right? 
I think I may not have enough space. So why don't we say a little bit better? Just say increments. That would be enough. Good. For this button here, we got uh, for ID is going to be button decrements and then enter refactor, right? So this will be button increments and button decrement, symmetric. And the button here for the text, it should be decrements. All right. So now we got all our GUI uh, components over here. Can I just do some very uh, pre-processing pre job, preparation job, which we don't have to do anymore uh, in the next video? Why don't we copy down the IDs very quickly that we might need uh, for the controller to really uh, call the helper method, right? So for initial value, it's a uh, label initial value. We don't need it, but this input will be very important. Input initial value, input init value, okay? So this one here uh, is going to be input init value. Okay, that's the ID. And what about this button here? It's the button create counter. Button create counter. So we can always refer back, right? What about the output over here? The output here is output counter value. So this will be output counter value, right? So the blue ones are just IDs, right? Just remember. And then, yeah, just to see, so you, you know, it's an ID. All right, let's now go to the other two buttons, uh, buttons at the bottom. And then you can see this one here, increments, is button increments and button decrements, right? Okay. So this will be button increments. And also this will be button decrements. All right. In principle, ID, uh, the ID names uh, are internal. So you, you as a developer, you can just choose whatever name that makes sense to you. I just I'm just choosing the ones that make sense to myself. All right. Okay, so now we are basically done with the GUI design, but you should always test it to see how it looks, uh, how it looks and feel. Okay, all right. So now I'm going to simply click on Run App, Run App over here. Click on that. It's going to launch our tablets over here. Let's now take a look if we are happy with it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, we got initial value. Oh, you know what? The only thing I would like to do initial value should be move a little bit uh, off from the border, right? Let's now go to initial value over here. You can see there's no border to the left. Let's see uh, increment got 20. Why don't we got 20 as well? So it will be aligned. Uh, so this one here will be 20. All right, can, I, you see, I simply just click on that, right? It will be uh, uh, as if I simply just drag the uh, left connection point to the border. They are the same, right? That's good. I'm just going to apply the changes over here and then I'm going to get initial value over here, right? However, for now, if I simply say initial value 23, let's say, and then I simply click on in, uh, initialize a new counter, nothing happened. If I say increment, I can click on that, nothing happened. I can click on that increment, nothing happened. Makes sense because nothing has been programmed for the controller and also model, which we'll do later. One more thing I'd like to do, how do we change uh, the title over here? Do you remember? What we should do is, we should let's uh, do that do that as well before we end the video. Let's now go under uh, also resources, go under values, and go to strings uh, XML. Right in this uh, app, we don't really need to create any spinner, so we don't need to develop anything further. But except that we're going to change this counter over here, so we can say counter app, and then identify yourself. For me, I'm going to say Jackie. Wong over here, and later on you may want to include your student number as well, but you will read the lab instructions accordingly. And as we learned before, we may just have to stop the app, the emulator, make sure you stop it, and then you want to launch the app again from scratch. You will rebuild from scratch for the name uh, for the app change. There we go. You can see counter app Jackie Wong over here, right? So for now we have done. The uh, first stage for the development, we have done the GUI, right? And what we're going to do in the next video, uh, let's look ahead quick, quickly. We're going to create three control methods in the uh, this class main activities, uh, the Java file. 
so far, uh, also we're going to copy and paste the helper methods later. Okay, so we're going to create three control methods: one for this button here, one for this button here, and one for this button here. And then we've got to make sure we attach those methods uh, to their corresponding buttons over here individually. That's what we will do. And then we're going to see how we can incorporate a model package under this particular uh, counter. Uh, folder over here, right? So we are really we are really matching what we did before previously in the uh, Eclipse. We got a, a model, and also console apps and JUnit JUnit tests. We got something very similar in the Android uh, development envir uh, environments over here.